This show is brought to you by these happy patrons. Hey, it's the... Wait a minute. It's the second season of the BNPR show. Episode number 12. A show celebrating the neat stylized artworks from around the world. We have quite a big show for you this time. And before that, here are the highlights. First, more lamps tune shader. Second, IK pose brush stylized epic hair. And third, abnormal add-on. More art and less math. Time for the news. Our first news item will save you some time. The feline entity made an add-on to help you streamline the making of the inverted hole outline. The outline helper add-on is a pay as much as you want, but you can also get it for free as well. You can use the outline helper to save time from navigating to the often overpopulated modifier tab in the properties window. The add-on interface is in two locations, the right sidebar, to add, adjust and remove outline, and to set outline thickness. And on the operator redo at the bottom left panel. A basic shadeless material is already made for you. A real time saver. Another outline renderer. Wu Yiming has added the new LAMPR patch. The patch improves stability for the line art renderer. Crashes happen a lot less often. If tinkering is your jam, go check out the LAMPR branch after this show. This next news item is a real game changer. Pablo DeBarro has been working hard to get a new sculpt brush into Blender. If you're like us, you will prefer ideas to reach completion in the snap of a finger. If the process took too long, the idea might be gone before you get it into view. With this IK pose brush, you can sculpt and pose stylized hair in real time instead of fiddling with the curves. Can't wait to get our hands on this new sculpt brush. Pablo is also working on a Sculpting Vertex Color Brush. Okay, slow down. Sculpting Vertex Color Brush. Yes, it's a vertex painting brush working in the sculpt mode. This brush enables you to paint like a pixel brush with brush parameters like flow, wet mix, wet persistence, and density, making the vertex paintbrush behave like a watercolor brush. Since it is vertex-based paint, the brush works in grease pencil as well. Just look at that, colorful lines, we like. This first tutorial of the show is the second tutorial by A Version of Reality, and it will blow your mind. It's also quite geared for the hardcore Blender users. FYI, you can watch his first tutorial. That one went more into the concept of the render. Now, how hardcore you say? Well. This real-time Eevee render is a mixture of texture painting for shading correction. Occlusion shadow and indirect lighting come from the cycles render, which turn into textures. Backlight and floor light renders, these are separate renders, both turning into textures. LAMPR line art, which turns into grease pencil strokes with corrected lines. Glow layer from the compositor. Background moon and water ripple render from Cycles, which also turn into a texture, then finally assemble in Eevee and the compositor. So pretty much every part of Blender is used. That's epic! Two things to take away from this tutorial is one, how the layers are structured. That is to say, pay attention to the big frame nodes and how the images are assembled. And two, how the adjustments are added to the rendered layers to fine tune the final result. For the beginners, Try to see how far you can go watching his tutorial. If you can understand more than half of what he's saying, then welcome to the Junior Hardcore League. Knock yourself out with this tutorial, it's quite a challenge. Do you know that you can make 3D pixel art using Blender without any additional add-on? Small note, when he wrote plugin, what he really meant was add-on. Anyways, the key points to take away from his tweeter thread tutorial. One, make the texture before modeling for more consistent pixel density. Two, set the pixel density, for example, 16 or 32 pixels per Blender unit. Three, use the add-on import image as a plane, set height to the pixel density. Four, change image interpolation to closest and blend mode to alpha clip for sharp pixels. Five, make lots of copies of the UV mesh for cutting. Six, when they're solid colors, you can neglect pixel density. Seven, cut and re-UV as needed. This is a fun one. How about making a few 3D pixel aircraft for yourself? We have a good tune shader tutorial by Lightning Boy Studio. 
a good tune shader is all about control. The more useful controls we have, the more we will be able to fine tune the shader to fit our purpose. Note the keyword is useful here. This tutorial solved the basic problem of a tune shader breaking when there are more than two lamps in a scene. The idea is to isolate the lamps using the RGB color channels. That means we can have a lamp for each color channel. Red lamp for the key light, green lamp for the fill light, and blue lamp for the backlight. By the names of these lamps, we can see that we have added features. The red lamp will be the source color ramp to the shade of our object. The green lamp's color ramp will provide the tint info for the opposite side of the red lamp. And lastly, the blue lamp's color ramp will provide the backlight specular glow. We have three major features and tons of controls, but the setup isn't without its limitations. The color lamps will shade other background objects or the second character in the scene, so we still need more isolation. Second, the pixel math when blending colors can still be improved for more intuitive color behavior. And third, we cannot use this tune with reflection or we will see a big white specular glow in the mirror. For issue number two, all the hardcore tier patrons will have a better solution in a blend file. For limitation number one, we can use empties as a light source. We have featured how this is done in the past show. Or we can request the return of the light group feature which we used to have in Blender prior to version 2.8. But if you have a tiny scene for an animation jam, this tune shader will prove useful. Go watch this tutorial, and we can't wait for the second part. Here are a few more tutorials that will be worth your time. Artistic Lighting Shader by Toots by Kai. This is an easy and fun one, making the border of the mesh gone and mix it with the background color. Gradient Texture Shading by Tiny Ruin. If you have seen Ooblet's game screen captures, you can get the same result from this tutorial. Stylized Water Tutorial by Zaki Sek. This is an unlisted video tutorial, very few people have seen it. It's pretty fast and you need to pause the video to look at the details, but awesome results. Watercolor Shading Using the Compositor by Marginally Competent. The result in the video doesn't look great, but the techniques are solid. We think this tutorial is worth your time. Drawing Stylized Tree in 3D by Node Spaghetti. You may have seen speed tree trees in many games, but to make them, you don't need speed tree. In this tutorial, you will learn how to do that using grease pencil and tools in Blender. Very nice results and full artistic control and fast. In-depth grease pencil basics by Socia Mix. If you are trying to dip yourself into 2D in 3D, then this tutorial is the ultimate guide. It covers a lot of details and hence the total over one hour in length very worth your time. Reflections Outline Tutorial by Kiskit 3D. When there is no geometry, Freestyle cannot render lines. So in this tutorial, you will see how to use the original edge nodes to add reflection outlines and how to do masking on places you don't want those lines. Sharp Edges Pixel Art Infographics by at Gladosic. To get these sweet sharp edges in your 3D pixel art, follow this quick tip and you are golden. And these are your bonus tutorials and tricks. These are plenty to digest, so take your time. All the links in the show notes. It's that time again to salivate on some sweet stylized artworks. And this is part one.
This is Plant Witch by Hayden Van Eerden. What we want to highlight on this one is the combination of composition and color to create information density. The contrast of her hat and pants make you focus on her. The background objects, although with details, they are more muted in color and stay as the background. This is a good example of using colors to help with the level of detail and focus. Time for community updates. The BNPR team has initiated a development of the Vertex Normal add-on. The goal of the add-on is to make the UI dead easy to use with less math and more art, but lots of precision. Cody Winchester will be coding it and will be funded using the Beer Development Fund. He has already made a mock-up of the add-on with full vertex editing doable in object mode. We're asking the community for the add-on name, and so far we are warming to Abnormal. Abnormal, the vertex normal editor. You can add your suggestion in the proposal doc. Cody will take your comments into consideration when making the add-on. With this add-on, we hope vertex normal editing can be more visible and used much more. The BNPR animation jam is a mini success. So far, these themes are selected. Train, Glitch, Dual, and Character Intro Screen. To avoid burnout, the jam has one week for a theme voting period and one week for the jam. For a limited time project, the results are pretty cool. Just look at this montage. To join, go to our Discord server, look for the Animation Jam channels, and the Jam Senpais will get you up to speed. You can make your animation using the past themes as well. We have two NPR feature proposals at the right-click select, both initiated by Tushant Volcarona, aka Cyan Laws. The first proposal is based on the Unity 3D plugin, which isolates self-shadow from cast shadow. This feature is much needed for shadow control. The second proposal is making Grease Pencil available in the Action Editor. This will open up a lot of possibilities. You can participate in the proposal discussion via the links in the show notes. Great news for everyone! In conjunction with the Lunar New Year, the BNPR store has a two-week discount period for these products. The price for these eBooks and courses have never been this low. It's also a good time to help us increase the Beer Development Fund. This fund is used to add and improve NPR features in Blender, such as the Abnormal add-on. The discount will end on February 9th at 0 hundred hours UTC. So grab them quick, and don't be afraid to rat us out to your friends. You know, one segment of Artwork of the Month isn't enough. Let's have seconds.
This is Fish Shop by Slow Mo Witch. In keeping with the level of detail theme, the details are great here. First, the objects in the scene are many, but with simple geometry and colors. Second, on the roof where the details are sparse, brush textures are used to add details. And third, the textures in all the objects have sparse details. This artwork is great because it's saying a lot, but in a limited way. Game art LOD. Nice job. Dillian Goo and his team are at it again with Demon Slayer Cats. The shadings are superb, a must watch in slow motion. If you prefer something mild, you might love The Anarctic Penguin Colors Part 1 by Mine. The animation is so chill and has that polar bear cafe vibe. And of course the penguins are so kawaii. Well, it's the end of the show, but not the end for our journey. And guess what? It's almost time to click on the show notes and dive into this cool NPR juice. Please subscribe if you have not. You can find us in these places as well. The show is very underfunded, and it takes a lot of time and research to make. So please go to our Patreon page and be a patron. And these are the awesome people funding the creation of this show currently. Thank you. You guys are keeping the show running for everyone. Before we go, one last question. What one NPR feature is a blender must have?